Okay, so today, um, properties of radicals. There are two rules for radicals. You have the product rule, and it says this. If you have the square root of A times B, if you are multiplying under a radical, it is okay to pull it apart in two pieces. The square root of A times the square root of B. Let me give you an example to write down. If you have the square root of 9 times 4, and you leave both of those under one radical, and you call it the square root of 36, the square root of 36 is just 6. But if you pull it apart in two pieces, the square root of 9 times the square root of 4, there is a square root of 9, it's 3. There is a square root of 4, it's 2. And 3 times 4 also gives you 6. So does it seem reasonable to you that we say that rule works? If you're multiplying underneath a radical, it's okay to pull it apart and write it in two separate pieces. There is a quotient rule. And it says, if you're dividing under a radical, A divided by B, it's okay to pull it apart in two pieces. And think of it as the square root of A divided by the square root of B. Here is an example. If you had 100 divided by 4, if you leave it all under one radical and you do the division, then it's the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is just 5. If you pull it apart and you think of it as the square root of 100 separate from the square root of 4, there is a square root of 100, it's 10, and there is a square root of 4, it's 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So it works. You get the same thing whether you, you work it all under one radical or if you pull it apart and make it in two pieces. But this is an important thing to know. There is no similar rule. For adding or subtraction. So what I mean by that is. If you have the square root of A plus B. You cannot pull it apart and say it's the same thing as the square root of B, A, and the square root of B separate. Here's an example. If you have the square root of 16 plus 9, if you'll leave it all under the radical, then that's the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. But if you pull it apart and write it as two pieces, then the square root of 16 separate from the square root of 9 is square root of 16, 4, square root of 9, 3, 4 plus 3 is 7, not 5. So you see it doesn't work. So once again, it's important to notice the difference. Do we have factors or do we have terms? The rules are not the same. So the rest of what we're going to do on these notes is um, we're going to compare radicals to fractions. When we're working with fractions, we always, you learned this a long time ago, always reduce your fractions. Same is true for radicals. Always reduce radicals. So simplify. The rest of what we're going to do on these notes is we're going to simplify radicals, and then we're going to add and subtract, and we're going to multiply and divide. Okay? So Simplifying, and in the middle of your notes here, you have your list of perfect squares and perfect cubes that you can refer to. So we're going to practice simplifying radicals for a minute first. So some of you can think the square root of 45 there's no number times itself that gives you 45. But there is a perfect square hiding inside of 45. And some of you can look at that and go, oh, 9 is a perfect square. That's 9 times 5. Square root of 9 times square root of 5. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 square roots of 5. Some of you can simplify it, boom, just like that. And if you can, go for it, good. If you need a little help, then we're going to do a prime factor tree. So 
two prime numbers, remember, are numbers only divisible by themselves in one. So, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. I always start with the smallest prime number, but 2 won't go into 45, so then we jump to 3. 45 is 3 times 15, and then it's 3 times 5. So, the square root of 45 we can write as 3 times 3 times 5 under a radical. Do you see any perfect squares? Perfect squares happen when you have a number times itself. So this is like asking you to do square root of 9 times square root of 5. Square root of 9 is just 3. Every time you see 2 of them, you can take 1 out. But this one, 5 has enough friends to go outside and play, so he has to stay in the house by himself. Here's another one. The square root of 60. Some of you can look at that and go, okay, perfect squares that divide evenly into 60. Oh, 4 is a perfect square. 4 times 15. So if I simplify it, square root of 4 times square root of 15, that's 2 square roots of 15. Some of you can do it like that in your head. And if you can, go for it. If you need a little help, then we're going to do a factor tree. So 2 times 30, 2 times 15. 2 doesn't go anymore, but 3 does. 3 times 5. So the square root of 60 can be rewritten as the square root of 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. When you see a pair, that's a perfect square. So this is like saying the square root of 4 times the square root of 15. There is a square root of 4. It's 2. Every time you see 2 of them, you get to take 1 out. So 2 and then 3 and 5 don't have a pair. So not, they don't have friends to go out to play. They have to stay in the house. So 2 square root of 15. The next one, you have to pay close attention. It's not asking you to simplify a square root. It is asking you to simplify a cube root. Some of you can look at that and go, okay, this means I'm looking for perfect cube factors that divide into 56. 8 is a perfect cube. 8 divides into 56. Some of you can go, oh, that's the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 7. Cube root of 8 is 2. So 2 times cube root of 7. If you can simplify it like that, just go right ahead. But if you need a little help, then do a factor tree. Smallest prime number is 2. This is 2 times 28. 2 will divide again. 2 times 14. Then 2 times 7. So I can think of this as the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. I'm sorry, not square root, cube root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. And if you are looking for a perfect cube, you have to have a number times itself three times. So there's a perfect cube. That's the cube root of 8. Every time I see 3, I get to take one of them out. So 2 comes out, but 7 doesn't have two more friends, so he has to stay in the house by himself. So 2 times the cube root of 7 is the way we will simplify the cube root of 56. The rule is don't leave any perfect squares or perfect cubes under the radical. The next two look like they are the same problem, but if, you're, if you look carefully, one of them is a square root and one of them is a cube root. So the square root of 54, x to the 7, y to the 8, z. If we want to simplify that, we've got to look for perfect squares. Some of you can go 54. That's 9 times 6, and 9 is a perfect square. So the square root of 9 is 3. I'm going to be able to take a 3 out. Hmm, how many perfect squares are there in x to the 7th? Well, if I look, if I divide it into 2's, there will be 3 that I can take out with one remainder to stay under. y to the 8th, there are going to be 4 of them that I can take out, um, and no remainders to stay underneath. And Z has no, no friends, so it'll have to stay under the radical. If you can do it like that, that is perfectly good with me. But um, a lot of us need a little extra help to see it. So if you do, do the, the factor tree. 2 times 27, 3 times 9, 3 times 3. This one gets a little long, but I'm going to go ahead and write it all out. So I can factor it as 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. And x to the 7th means x times itself 7 times. And y to the 8th means y times itself 
8 times, and then times B. So if I'm looking for perfect squares that I can take out, I'm looking for pairs. 3 times 3, that's like the square root of 9, and every time I see 2, I get to take one of them out. X times X, I get to take out one of the X's. Another X times X means another X comes out. I get to take out three X's. I get to take out one, two, three, four perfect square Y's. And then I have to leave six X, Z under the row. Now, don't leave it like this. Call it 3x to the third, y to the fourth, times the square root of 6xz. If I were being really picky, I would talk to you about sometimes you need absolute value bars around things to be sure that you're getting the positive version of the answer. But we're not going to worry about that for right now. Questions? Are we okay? If we redo the same problem as a cube root, the cube root of 54, x to the 7th, y to the 8th, z, then again, I'm going to consider the factored version of it. And you only have to write this out if it helps you. But this time, if you're going to simplify and take a cube root, when you, are, when you are looking for perfect cubes, you have to have a number times itself three times. So perfect cubes, I could take out a 3 and an x and another x. And I could take out a y and another y. And then I have to leave the cube root of 2 times x times y times y times z. And then we should simplify this. 3x squared y squared times the cube root of 2x y squared z. So the rule is don't leave any perfect cubes under the radical. We took all of these perfect cubes out. And then everything that's not a perfect cube stays under the radical. If you have the square root of 3 divided by 5 under a radical, the quotient rule told us we can pull this apart. And we can call it the cube root of 3 separate from the cube root of 5. Here's the deal. When we're simplifying radicals, we don't ever want to leave Somebody just decided this a long time ago because it's easier to have to find common denominators and things like that if you don't have a radical in the bottom of the fraction. So we're going to make this rule. While we're re reducing radicals, while we're simplifying, we're not going to ever leave a fraction like this. So turn over to the next page in your notes. And at the top of your page, write this. Write this little note to yourself. To rationalize... the denominator, that means we rewrite it so that it doesn't have a radical in the bottom of a fraction. To rationalize the denominator, we multiply by 1, and I'll put 1 in quotation marks because we're going to multiply by a special kind of 1. You can write the number 1 lots of different ways. 10 over 10 is 1. X over X is 1. A million over a million is 1. The square root of 3 over the square root of 3 is 1. So, on the top of your second page of notes, that same problem shows up again. And the goal is, I want to multiply it by some kind of 1 that causes the radical to go away. Here's what will do it. If I multiply this by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5, 
I'm really just multiplying it by 1. And if we use the product rule to multiply fractions, you multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So on the top, we'll have the square root of 3 times 5. There are no perfect squares under there, so nothing gets to come out. But on the bottom, if I squish these both all under the same radical, I do have a perfect square. I have a pair. So that means I can take out a 5. On the top, I have the square root of 15. Here's the deal. This original fraction that we had means the same as this new fraction. It's not obvious because they don't look the same, but they mean the same. Because all we did was take this fraction and multiply it by 1 and turn it into this fraction. This is the preferred way to leave the answer because it doesn't have a radical in the denominator. So while I erase this, work on those next three and see what you can do with them. example, you looked at that and you said, I've got a cube root that I'm trying to rationalize, not a square root. In order to take something out from underneath a cube root, you have to have something times itself three times. So I have one, two. That means in order to be able to take something out from a radical, I need two more twos. So we can multiply this by a special kind of one. We're going to multiply by the cube root of 2 times 2 over the cube root of 2 times 2. How does that help? I'm going down this time. It helps because when I multiply straight across the top, 6 is not under a radical, so I can't multiply it by these. I just have to call it 6 times the cube root of 4. But on the, in the denominator, when I squish all of this under the same big radical, I got the cube root of 2 times 2 times 2. So do you see now I have a perfect cube, so I can take out a 2. So it turns into 6 times the cube root of 4 all over 2. And then there's one more thing we can do. 6 over 2 will reduce. So we can call it just 3 times the cube root of 4. It's not obvious really, but this means the same as this original fraction that we had. And this is the preferred way to write the answer because it doesn't have a radical in the bottom. On this next one, I, I can pull this apart because I've got a quotient under, under one big radical. If I pull it apart, can I leave it like this? We don't like to leave a radical in the bottom of a fraction. So what about the square root of 8? Does it simplify any? It becomes one that, that we see all the time. The square root of 8, that's 2 times 4, then 2 times 2. 2 times square root of 2. 2 times square root of 2 is what I can do with the top. But do I get to leave it like that? Still have a radical in the denominator. And now I'm going to multiply it by a special kind of 1. I'm going to multiply it by square root of 3 over square root of 3. And the reason I know that is because I need a pair. So if I multiply straight across the top, then I can squish these two all under 1. So 2 times the square root of 2 times 3, 2 on the outside, 
On the bottom, I got the square root of 3 times 3. So I can take out a 3 on the bottom. On the top, I don't have enough to take anything out. So 2 times the square root of 6 all over just 3. Am I finished? Nothing reduces, does it? So it is not necessarily obvious at all that this fraction means the same as what we had originally, and it's the preferred way to write the answer because it doesn't have a radical in the bottom. So this is how you simplify um, radicals. You rationalize the denominator, don't leave a radical in the bottom. Work on that one more. Here's what people usually think now. When we get to this one, you notice we're looking for a perfect cube. And a lot of times people will go, okay, I need to multiply by one nine, I need to multiply by two more nines. And you can do that, except for you have bigger numbers than you really need. Here's what you want to do. You want to recognize, oh, wait a minute, nine is really three times three. So I already have two threes under the radical. In order to make it, the radical disappear, I'm going to think of this as the cube root of 2 separate from the cube root of 3 times 3. And then I've got to multiply by a special kind of 1. I need to multiply by the cube root of 3 over the cube root of 3. Then that way, when I multiply straight across the top, because I can, I can squish things all together under 1, I will have the cube root of 2 times 3 on top, and on bottom I will have the cube root of 3 times 3 times 3. You see how that helped us? That gave us a perfect cube on the bottom, so I can take out one of the 3's. And on the top, I have the cube root of 6. So it's not very obvious that this means the same as what we had originally. These mean the same thing, but this is the preferred way to leave your answer. Okay, so we've done one of the things on our list. We've worked on simplifying radicals.